Well, well, let, going back, you know, to the when you were smoke jumping before you went to Alaska when you got drafted. So, oh yeah. So when did you start smoke jumping? Well, I, uh, I, I worked for the Forest Service that first year in '65 on the hotshot crew up in uh, in um, Nine Mile, and uh, then and that was a, just a terrible rainy rainy year and stuff. And as a consequence of that, they had. Uh, a really really large uh, turnover I mean I think there was I'm pretty sure there was 80 or 88 I, I want to say 88 in our new man class I mean, to replace that, the turnover yeah because there were so many people there was some guys I want to say one or two that year that did not get a fire jump they they got to the top of the list they went on a big ground pounder and you remember the rules you know if you got so many hours then on a pounder fire you still had to go to the bottom of the list so they rotated the bottom of the list and it was such a wet year that they never rotated up again and that they so they never got a jump even and and Christ my first year I think I had uh, I think I had 14 fire jumps and and that first year was 66 uh, yep, 66, 7, yeah. and 8 were the years I jumped. Yeah, in 66, I had, yeah, I had 14, 14 fire jumps, 7 practice jumps, and then I got an extra uh, practice jump um, when uh, um, I was having lunch in the bomb shelter down there, bomb crater thing they call it, and, and I was sitting next to Harry Roberts, and he just looks at me and he says, why don't you, uh, when you get done with lunch, Rastrum, get your gear on. And I thought I should ask what, and then I said, "Nope, just do it." <laughs> and that what the deal was is there was some, there was some guys that were coming back from National Guard summer camp, and Harry was just going to fill up the plane. And so there was me and I don't know three or four other guys, but we got an extra, we got an extra practice jump just for the hell of it till that day. Well, what, 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 how'd you take to jumping? I mean, when you you hadn't done it before, what was it like for you? In the first well, trip? the uh, the first my very first jump I actually and I I'm pretty sure that they videotaped them but I actually actuated my my reserve chute and Barb's little sister oh she called me Don Don two shoots for Christ who knows <laughs> how long <laughs> but but, uh, but what they figured out I had done you know you, you're supposed to leave the door you know with your arms crossed over like that well they figured that I had caught it with my forearm here and just brushed that handle enough that but I remember I'm thinking oh this is not good because I could see the thing just tumbling out of there you know and of course the regular my regular main chute had completely inflated but this thing kind of tumbled out and then it caught air and it popped up and so I'm looking around and I'm thinking this is this is bad because I've got two shoots out and the, the main one is fine so I went ahead and pulled it in with the one hand pulled in with the other and just unclipped the thing and let it go and they got down the ground and they said well that's what we told you to do and so it yeah. all worked out but but I uh, I really did I mean that's the exciting part. You know that. Yeah. I mean, you, you know how exciting it is to jump out of an airplane. Perfectly good airplane, <laughs> as they always say. But I, I really did enjoy it. And uh, uh, I, I probably got airsick more than some people, but not as much as other people. But I did I did have occasion to get airsick a few times. And I also had, had one time, when I, I can't remember what year it was, but I, I had my first chew of... of uh, Copenhagen. And I was just getting ready to go on a on a uh, cargo run with another fellow, and we went down somewhere down the bitter at some place and dropped a whole load of cargo on a DC three. And I mean, I was just as green as grass. And the first bundle we went, that we threw out, most of me went out of the plane with it, and I still had a hold with my right hand. And, <laughs> But the fellow was with me, grabbed me by the shoulder and pulled me in. He says, Jesus Christ, are you sick? And I said, God damn right I am. <laughs> so he said, you dragged the, you dragged the gear back, but stay the hell away from this door. <laughs> but I'd been chewing this stuff, and I was swallowing the, oh, the juice, you know, and I was just sick as a dog. So we, we got everything dumped. We got it all dropped, and uh, I went in the back of the plane there, and I found a garbage bag. 
and I just laid on the floor <laughs> and stuck my head in that garbage bag and threw up most of the way back to Missoula. God, I was sick. But it sure cured me of, of ever trying that crap again. Oof, God, that was horrible. Well, and those first jumps you had, those 14 jumps, you remember any of those fire jumps at all? Anything you know, I, I really wish I would have, if I had had a little more time, I would have, I, I would have latched on to my, my um, uh, diaries, because I have them around here somewhere, and I could have, hell, I could have told you every one other thing, but I, I do, rem yeah, as a matter of fact, I remember my first fire jump was down by Superior, and it was a two-manner, and um, the guy that uh, I jumped with was a much more seasoned jumper, and where we jumped, uh, <coughs> we're all, <coughs> Barb, can you get that? Talking about that first fire jump, yeah, I, seasoned guy. I was, uh, what I was saying was that we, we jumped this fire, and of course, there's two bears on the just about the, exactly the same height on this on the other side of the of the valley here. The bears are over here. Our fire is over here, <laughs> and I'm digging, <laughs> digging line and watching the bears most of the time. He's telling you, what are you worried about? They're way the heck and gone over there. Let it alone. You know, get, get, let's get with the fire. So we did, and and we knocked the thing out, and then we were hiking out, and and I remember we saw. Uh, a, a bobcat just not too long we I mean there was a trail kind of a pretty good trail in the bottom of the canyon there where between the where the two mountains met and we were hiking out of there and there was a bobcat that went running across and you just don't see very many of those in the wild and it was th that was really fun for me I mean that was yeah. a cool deal to be able to see a bobcat out uh, close to uh, and and we were probably I bet we weren't a quarter of a mile from where the trail hit the road when we saw that thing, and I was really tickled by that and, and stuff. But I'm trying to think. Um, were all those fire jumps in Montana? Uh, well, some of them were. Some of them would have been. Uh, there might have been one or two over in in Idaho, but I think most of them. Yeah, I think pretty mo pretty much most of them would have been. Um, would have been in just in Montana. I, I know I jumped some fires down uh, on the Chalice Forest on the Bitterroot and the no Chalice isn't right. What's the Clearwater? Clearwater. Yeah, over in there, jumped some fires there. We had, I remember we had one fire that was really fun. There's about ten of us on that fire, ten or twelve, and and uh, they helicoptered us off and dropped us off down right along the the Selway River there and there was a great big wide, it's, it's still there of course, Big, great big wide opening there uh, next to the river and then the highway is going along there but it's a huge pull out and uh, we were supposed to wait there for a bus or a truck or whatever from Missoula well, it was hotter than Hades so we just kind of stripped down and, and we were floating down the river you know <laughs> uh, made several jaunts down through there because most everybody had uh, not swimsuits, but just an extra pair of underwear, you know, and stuff, and, and we'd hike up little ways and kind of hide in the bushes so that you wouldn't embarrass anybody, but then we'd float down the river and get a little bit past that thing, and finally the the uh, truck showed up to pick us up, and and uh, it took a little time to get everybody together and yeah. stuff, and, and all, and, and uh, Toby, stop! Hey, we had a really fun time there, and and uh, well, I remember. I think that might have been, might have even been on this. No, it wasn't the same fire, but there was another fire that uh, one of the roarbacks was on the fire, and he had a really good portable radio, and uh, it was when the doors light my fire was uh -huh. a biggie and it was the long version and we're out there hacking away in the brush and he has that thing going you know, and come on baby light my fire <laughs> oh, geez, I mean we were all singing along just having a hell of a good time it was pretty it was pretty fun it was pretty pretty exciting too it was pretty pretty cool deal but but uh, and I remember 
I can't remember if it was that first year, but I know it was one of the years I jumped in Missoula. We jumped a fire um, someplace, if we were told correctly, and I've never really plotted this on a map, but someplace there's a place over there where uh, two of the national forests meet, and the Helena Forest is on one side, and whatever other forest is on the other, uh, on this ridge, but it's not too far out of uh, White Sulphur Springs. And that's where we that's where we were trucked into when we came off the fire. They took us to White Sulphur, and and there was quite a bunch of us. I can't remember if it was one plane load or two, but it was a damn big fire. And uh, we got to White Sulphur. And I think I was only it might have been the first year I jumped because I was only like 19 years old, and and of course I looked like I was 14. But the deal was we got there about lunchtime, and so they just so you know just go find yourself some lunch, you know, and stuff, and. So I was with about five other guys, and of course I was the only really young one and stuff. But we trooped into a bar and sat down, you know, and everybody ordered a beer and uh, and, a, and a burger and stuff, or a couple burgers, whatever. <laughs> but the the bartender came to me and he says, "And what'll you have, young fella?" <laughs> <laughs> and, and I said, "I'll have a Budweiser, like my friends." And he said, "Okay." So we had our cold beer and our burgers and. The nice thing was, and this is why it's so memorable, is when we got done, when we were getting ready to leave and we were paying our bill, um, he said, and he had these six packs wrapped in paper bags, and he said, these are courtesy of the Great Falls beer distributor that was here when you guys came in. He said, appreciate your work. And, oh, that's great. And, yeah, and so he sent us all out of there with a cold six pack of bud. That's cool. Which I thought was really yeah, it, but like I say, it, it was very memorable and yeah, and uh, well, it's just like when I remember one of the one of the we were only on two or three fires a year. I was on that hotshot crew, but we were on a fire over in out of Yakima, Washington that year in in '65, and and uh, I kind of had a story that I just told them, well, you know, I I don't carry an ID because I don't want to lose it and stuff. And, I know in Alaska, and I jumped up there uh, on those on those backup crews. I wasn't old enough, but up there, you may recall, they they had a form that they would, you know, well, you sign this form, and then you're swearing that I represented, I was of age, so that got them off the hook in the bars up there. That's how they did that up there. But anyway, the I remember uh, being in this one in Yakima, and. Uh, myself and another guy were sitting at the bar at you know just at on on bar stools and then some other guys came up and we were waiting for a plane and they got a table so they said hey you guys come over and sit with us so we stood up to take our drink with us and the barmaid just about had a coronary I mean you can't do that and I said well why the heck not we paid for it we're just going over there and it's against the law really <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's against the law and so it ends up we find out that that uh, it really was against the law and so she had to pick up our drinks for us and walk them they're like eight feet for God's sake but she had to walk them over and set them down at the table now you can move okay <laughs> what a deal well when you